Hello, everybody. So I spent the past week figuring out the weather system. Now, I had to think about this a lot. I actually programmed three different weather systems, and I finally went with this one. Um, and it's not an easy thing to discuss. It's not an easy thing to figure out what you want to do. Now, why is it so hard to make a weather system? Because the weather on this planet is batshit. Uh, for example, there are glass rains. The sun can beat down on the deserts on the day side and turn the sand to glass, little shards of glass. And then the wind might come across and block the sun and the glass cools and the wind rips it out of the, off the surface and whizzes it across your base and you have a glass rain. What kind of precipitation is that? Is that snow? Is that water? Similarly, maybe you have a cloud of seeds that, uh, that come raining down fast-growing plants that try and wedge their way into all your stalks and all of your bases and grow as fast as they can before the sun bakes them alive. So there are a lot of things that are quote-unquote weather which certainly would not be covered in a standard weather system and it took me a long time to figure out a way to deal with that so uh, I did it in a couple of ways. There are two basic components to every weather system. One of them you can already see. This is the in-world game object that is created when the weather system comes into effect. Right now they're just particle systems, but if you needed something complicated, you could put something complicated in there. There's nothing preventing it. The other thing is the way that the effects are applied. So let's go ahead and clear this down here, and then we'll hit work. You can see here, today, bitter cold wind, negative 20, tomorrow, snow, work. Oh, look, it switched to snow. More placeholder graphics. Over here in our console, you can see that a lot of things happened. So what exactly happened? Uh, starship ceilings hit by temperature. Starship, ce starship ceiling hit by temperature. Starship ceiling hit by wind. Starship he ceiling hit by uh, s uh, temperature. Uh, hit by snow pressure. Hit by visibility. So let me go ahead and explain what's happening. The weather does not understand what the weather is. The weather has no concept of precipitation. Instead, what the weather is, is it's just a collection of effects. Now, in-world effects, as these are called, are just things that are applied to whatever happens to be in the world. So if you get stabbed by a knife, that's an in-world effect. If you get a little bit chilly, that's an in-world effect. If the lights go on, that's an in-world effect. If they go off, that's an in-world effect. And it's so broad as to be useless, right? Well, an in-world effect is specifically something which is applied against a target, and then the target has to decide what to deal with it, what to do with it. The bitter wind from yesterday. Now, I have something that's, you know, temperature negative 20, but the weather itself doesn't care about that. That's just for the player. The actual weather, what it does is it applies these. Now, when the day starts, before the day actually begins, these are applied in predictive ways. And that means that even if some damage were going to happen, it wouldn't happen then. You'd have the chance to adjust your morning schedule and try and prevent the damage from happening. During the workday, they are actually applied, and whatever damage is going to occur occurs. So there's two stages. But it's the same effect both times, it's just that one time it doesn't follow through. <laughs> so the two effects for the bitter wind are a temperature effect and a wind effect. The temperature effect is of type energy, and the effect is of uh, is is specifically named temp. Now, how anything on the scene responds to this request to take temperature effects, that's up to that thing on the scene, and right now everything ignores them. <laughs> but it's not hard for us to begin to roll out some more uh, important effects. So the way it works right now, you may have noticed that the temperature effects and so on, they were applied against the ceiling and the hull, but nothing else. So if we go in here, they weren't applied against the floor, they weren't applied against the captain's chair, they weren't applied against the sleeping bays, they weren't applied against the lockers, they were only applied against the ceiling and the hull. Now why is that? Well that's because this is considered an interior zone. Interior zones aren't directly affected by weather. Instead, they are responsible for relaying secondary weather effects. So this interior zone is bounded by some ceilings and some holes, and its responsibility is to collect data from those ceilings and those holes when an effect hits them. So it gets queued up with secondary effects. 
that part's not done yet. But uh, basically, this temperature damage, this temperature effect, uh, the walls would have an insulation factor, and only a small portion of it would get passed through. But how exactly does that work? Let's say that the, po the holes and the walls and the ceilings, they all pass 100% of the temperature through. Well, the value is negative 20. So does that mean that it'd be like negative 800 degrees inside? Well, no, of course not. This is why the effects have to be carefully uh, configured. They have to work very carefully. This min value and the max value, these values are actually the target value. This temperature is trying to make your temperature negative 20. It is not applying 20 points of temperature damage. It is trying to set you to negative 20. So uh, this quantity here, this is the actual amount of exposure. So when the walls get hit, they would cut that down to 0.1 or 0.01 or whatever. And then you would also add in any temperature sources inside the, inside the base, like heaters or, or people. And, uh, and the quantities would, would tell you how much of each affects the temperature inside. So that's how things like temperature work. But things like wind, these are not ambient. And you can see that I've got linear checked. So instead of being ambient, these are linear. And that means that they don't, um, they don't affect interiors in the same way. Instead, they just come straight down from the sky. Now, wind is not something that's going to pass through a ceiling, so uh, it doesn't have any effect at all. But um, if it was something to pass through the ceiling, if it passed through the ceiling here, it would hit this floor here, and it would not affect those tiles over there. Obviously, a missing ceiling would cause some pretty bad things to happen shortly thereafter, but that's another story. That's not caused by the wind, that's caused by the missing ceiling. Linear effects do stack up. They are deltas. Uh, this wind is trying to apply negative 10 temperature to you. And this is interesting because they're both temperature. See? Both energy temperature. But this one's actually trying to reduce your temperature by 10. So that's the difference. Linear effects actually are additive, whereas ambient effects are absolute. Now, the reason that I have energy as a setting here is because this determines the default defense against it. Uh, now, an energy defense, insulation is the, is the defense against that. So that would be things like clothing or, uh, or, or a wall's insulative values or whatever. If I were to change this from energy into um, surface or impact, then it would be the hardness of the target that would prevent the damage. Uh, and if I were to change it over to biological, it wouldn't affect things like walls at all, um, and so on and so forth. And that allows me to, to do things like knife cuts or toxins or floating clouds of acid. Whatever I need to do, uh, I can make it so that it automatically understands the kind of defense that might be useful against it. And I don't have to worry about, oh, this mod introduces acid clouds. That's never been introduced before. All of the stuff in the game does not understand what an acid cloud is. Instead, all of the stuff in the game just assumes that it is, in fact, a biological agent or something similar, uh, and it has to, and it uses the same preventative measures that would normally be used. You can sideswipe that by setting it to unknown. <laughs> anyway, the snow has an extra couple of things here. It's got the same thing with the temperature, where it tries to set it to negative ten, or somewhere between negative ten and zero. However, it's also got snow pressure and visibility. Now, visibility is another one of these ambient ones, so it's trying to set your sight to zero. It's not causing sight damage, it's trying to set your sight to zero. How you respond to that depends on what sort of species you are, whether you have any sight-enhancing goggles, whether you're carrying a flashlight, all of that stuff. But that's on the character. So the character's responsibility is to respond to these effects. The character has to understand what sort of response to make. And that allows modders to change that response without actually having to change the weather. So you can make a species that's resistant to being blinded and just put it in the game and it'll automatically understand all that. The snow pressure is another linear effect where it's actually putting weight on top of stuff. And, uh, and so it's adding 30 to 50 units of weight. And that uh, it's actually kilograms, I believe. Yeah. So it's adding 30 to 50 kilograms of weight on top of these objects. And now that's not a whole lot as long as it doesn't add up. And it, since it's weather, it wouldn't probably add up. You'd, you'd sweep it off at the end of the day or whatever. But um, 
uh, the point is that that is an additive value. So if there is something else causing weight effects, then that would add in. And of course, if you've got something like a glass ceiling, 50 kilograms of weight might be terminal. It might break your ceiling. That's all up to the object in question, though. The ceiling has to understand that weight is bad for it. Otherwise, it will just ignore it. The ceiling will definitely ignore the fact that it is told that it should not be able to see anything. But, you know, it might ignore or might not ignore the concept of weight. I think I mentioned that interior spaces are zones that have, that have their own responsibility. Um, if I didn't mention that, uh, uh, sorry, this is the third time I've recorded it there. Uh, none of this stuff got hit because it's in an interior zone and the interior zone is responsible for managing its own weather effects, uh, propagating weather effects to the interior, and uh, I haven't programmed that part yet. But I believe that this weather system should be quite viable for complex weather, uh, you know, things that people want to do in an interesting and complex way. If you need to add some kind of special weather, you can, because you can either put it in these effects here, or you can make it in the game world object that gets spawned when the weather happens. You can have that do something unusual and extraordinary. So it's uh, pretty flexible, and I'm kind of happy with it. Um, it's yards better than the other two options I had. And uh, if you got this far, congrats. You can let me know what you think. Uh, I still have to do interior zones, and I still have to do uh, planet understanding that it's a planet. Thank you.